Ooh, rise and fall of controller players. This is a good one. In a game as advanced as Fortnite, controller players had no business competing with anybody using a keyboard and mouse. But Agreed. two years after the game's release, they were completely terrorizing the competitive scene. At one point, 85% of players in every major tournament played on controller, but today that number has plummeted to under 10%. Yo, where do we get that stat from? 85%? I don't think I've ever watched a tournament that's not on console where 85% of people are on controller. I don't know about that one. I'm calling Bronos so out a bit on that stat. That we'll see. Three is that the real? Entire player base struggle to compete at the highest level. This is the rise and fall of controller players okay. in Fortnite. In the early days I'm of Fortnite, Cat. We'll see what he says, PC, though. you would be using a mouse and keyboard, and if you played on console, you'd be using a controller. Because of this, everybody just agreed that KBM players were way better than controller players because PC is better than console. So if you played eh, controller, other you only played against other controller players, and the same thing went with mouse and keyboard. The two most important things in Fortnite are having good aim and I don't being know about good that. building. This is where keyboard and mouse really had an advantage. It is much easier to aim using a mouse because you have your whole arm compared to a controller where all you have is a tiny plastic stick to move around with your thumb. Fair. Luckily, controller players had aim assist to make up for this, but oh it wasn't boy. really that strong. Building on keyboard... Okay. Keyboard was also way easier than controller because there are so many buttons you have to press. For the first few months after the game's release, controller players had to scroll through each build that and was press crazy. so many buttons in order to scrolling through your builds was one terrible. On keyboard. Overall, playing on controller put you at a massive disadvantage until the Builder Pro setting was Builder released Pro in January of 2018. Life changing. Builder Pro made building on controller similar to <sighs> mouse and keyboard. You press one button to switch to your builds, then another one to instantly place a build piece and use the same bind to switch back to your guns. This caused a massive jump to the oh, skill yeah. level of all controller Vicious players. Sway. Although this was a massive improvement, KBM was still the better input to play on. Just quickly before jumping into the rest of today's video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's sponsor, Star Wars Hunters. This is one of my favorite games right now and they have just launched season two. It's a super fun third person 4v4 combat game that you can play for free on iOS, Android or Nintendo Switch. There is a huge range of different hunters that you can choose from to play in the different PvP game modes. Not only that, each battlefield invokes iconic Star Wars locales. Play Star Wars Hunters now and support me by downloading the game using my link in the description down below. Get up on out my face, brother. Twitch, by the way. Get up on out of here, brother. <laughs> and in September of 2018, Fortnite announced one this of the most con, revolutionary bro. things in gaming history. Crossplay between PC and console. This big. was the first was time big. ever where console and PC players would be matched in the same lobby. Once this happened, console players realized that they could just play on PC by plugging in their controller. Instead of playing on a console where they are capped at 60 FPS, they could now play on PC and have higher FPS with much less input delay. With the increased performance, they were slowly getting closer and closer to oh, mouse they and keyboard were dominating players. At the on start. top of this, a few months after the crossplay update, something massive was discovered. A controller player named Upshaw was messing around with his settings one day and realized that his aim assist yeah. was much stronger when he had higher fps this was weird 140 fps right that's where our frame rate limit i've got a good computer we're playing on low settings so we should be hitting that no problem um here's my buddy over here um so you can see the aim assist snap on occurs really far away so when i'm like about a couple <gasps> Dude, feet that's away crazy i can snap right that into his snap head. on is nuts we just <laughs> Dude, that's cheating like what am i seeing man like i know i'm mouse and keyboard i know the controller kids are gonna flame me but like bro come on that is insane Dude, aim assist now is like nothing like that. Oh my god. Touch on uh, on L2. Now see what happens when I turn it all the way down to... This is crazy FPS. though. So we're still the same distance away, but one tap does not drag me into his head at all. He turned his game all the way down to 30 huh. FPS and had little to no aim assist, but as he raised it higher and higher, it became stronger and stronger. This That's discovery weird. would cause every controller player who took the game seriously to switch to PC immediately. Shortly That's crazy. after this discovery was the beginning of L2 spamming. Whenever oh. you aim down sights, the aim assist would basically lock onto the player L2 you're spamming at, is so and this ugly. meant that constantly aiming in and out meant you would have robot so like annoying aim. to watch. One of the first players Aiden. to master L2 spamming yep. was Aiden. He first blew up by competing at Fortnite's summer skirmish that took place at PAX West in 2018. At the time, Nick Merckx was considered to be one of the best controller players in the game, and Aiden planned on contesting him at this tournament. No one and knew he about went Aiden. on to do just that. Game or two, not, it, it doesn't it's spell just, the end. Look, it's so it's ugly to watch. It's just like... Oh my God, <laughs> dude, Nick. Aiden gets too much inside here. He's got to go for a turn. And here we go. Oh, Nick. He switched to the wrong gun. Nick switched to the wrong gun. Nick switched to the wrong gun. Oh, 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 he absolutely dominated. I will die on the hill that Aiden is one of the best control players of all time, but he didn't actually play that well in this tournament. I'm sorry. Aiden didn't win this. Nick lost it. If you went back and watched this, Nick threw so hard in so many of these fights. 
Like, Nick played so much worse than he normally would. If Nick played how he normally played at home, he would have beat Aiden. I'm just saying. Aiden's good, but man, Nick fumbled way too many times in this tourney. Nick Merck's making him the new best controller player. If you look at the leaderboard... He handled it well, though. He did handle it graciously. I loved how Nick handled it. Mouse, he could have been super salty. Because controller players realized that they could compete. So what happened that suddenly made controller players so good? Well, at the beginning of Chapter 2, new Dude, sensitivity Sway was settings so were nuts. This made Fortnite on controller much more customizable, so everybody was Bro. able to build and... How is Sway doing One of the this best so players long ago. after this update was Unknown Army. I'm Aim such a controller player! Aim assist to my bones. Yo, <gasps> oh, That was on 72 hours, I by just, the way. I just twitch on him! He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. God. Unknown completely mastered aiming on top of peace control <laughs> completely and it showed in mastered aiming. He won he FNCS did. in Chapter 2 Season 1 and also managed to win 6 solo cash cups along with a couple duo cash cups. He was on there was such a, a dominant shift spree. on every tournament leaderboard this season as time and time again there were more controller players earning than mouse and keyboard. While players like Unknown were using the legacy aim assist settings which Ooh. made L2 spamming broken, other controller players started to switch to linear. The thing is everybody thought this legacy was so aim assist crazy. was the real issue because of how overpowered so, no, dude, so if you guys know what's happening there, Unknown literally knows someone's in this hayfield and using aim assist, he can literally drag his crosshair over the bush the thing is, and wait until it locks onto someone. That's how he knows where they are. Legacy aim assist like, was dude, the real come issue on. because of how overpowered Unknown made it seem. This single-handedly so caused Epic Games to remove it and everybody finally thought they nerfed controller into the ground, but yeah. little did they know, it just got even better. Yeah, Since Lydia everyone was, was even so better than Legacy. Since clips of players getting destroyed by L2 spamming, nobody realized that the new linear settings were even better. It was strong while aiming down sights, but the hip fire was basically hip aimbot. Fire was this so meant that the good. new meta of fighting on controller was to jump in a box in 50-50. Most players wouldn't even carry a shotgun because carrying an AR and SMG <laughs> Aaron was coaching a better option. Mateek, bro. Either double scar or single scar. This video was... Or an SMG. No shotgun allowed. I don't care. This cost I remember this, bro. This clip was so players, bad. This whole video is crazy. Invitational, where 75% of all players that qualified were using one. In the same... Wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait. I want to take a guess how many of those top 100 players are on controller vast rate? 79 out of the top 100 on EU is controller. 79 out of the top 100 on NA is controller. 88 in top 100 is controller on West. What? Where did we get that stat from, though? Where did Blake get that stat from, though? of all players that qualified were using one. In the same really? season, Epic Whale, who was one of the best KBM players on NA West, decided to switch to controller and this won was an crazy, FNCS bro. by doing so. Once this season ended, Fortnite obviously knew something needed to change, so they nerfed the strength of aim assist by about 30%. This would be reflected pretty quickly just by looking at the leaderboards because most controller players relied on the overpowered aim assist yeah. instead of actual talent. As a lot of players started to fall off, a few players were bursting onto the scene. Two of them were Day and Marrow. With nope. the game mode being trios for all of 20 21, playing with good fighters was a necessity, and Day and Marrow were two of the best. Along with Reverse 2K, they managed to win two FNCSs during a time where controller players didn't have much representation on the leaderboards. Ooh, the main reason say for that. this is because most trios didn't want to have more than one controller player because it was much harder for them to get long range damage. In the entire it was just NA. A lot of the good controller players at NA were still doing crazy. You still had Scoped, Illust, all those guys still doing nuts. It was more EU that just still lacked that controller representation. But even at this point, though, Leshy was still extremely well respected and crazy of 2021 there wasn't a single fncs final with more than 20 controller players and most of them had around 10 to 15. Yeah. although the best trio in the game had two controller players most of them had one or zero luckily chapter 3 would change the game mode to duo so this wasn't as big of an issue chapter 3 season 1 also had one of the best metas ever for controller the stinger smg was so stinger broken SMG. and shotguns were so weak that barely anybody carried one yeah. close range tracking is much easier on controller than it is on oh, keyboard and mouse, so with a spray heavy meta this oh, benefited controller players a ton but some Somehow, even with the best case scenario, only 24 controller players managed to qualify for grand finals. Of course, Mero would go on to win FNCS with Booga, but most of the other controller players finished in the bottom half. It was basically After just this, Mero. everything started to go downhill, and this was the last time we would ever see more than 20 controller players in a major tournament final. This yeah. is because of three main reasons. Oh, here we go. Is aim assist bugs. Chapter three yeah, and four had tons of really issues where you would just randomly lose aim assist for an entire game. This might not seem like a huge deal, but aiming without aim assist is very difficult, and when you're in a lot Lobby with the best of the best, you need it to perform. Second is the addition of scoped weapons. Weapons True. with scopes have very little aim assist, which makes it hard for controller players to get long range storm surge tags. This means KBM players have a huge advantage, and since scoped weapons are still the norm in Fortnite today, it is a big reason why they dominate stacked lobbies. The yep, third reason agree. is the box fighting meta. With the entire game revolving around box fighting, yeah. most players on KBM nowadays are too far ahead mechanically to the point where controller players cannot keep up. I box don't know about that on one. KBM has always been way easier than controller. 
controller because you can be much quicker with your movements and make more plays overall. And going into chapter four, this trend would continue. Point one and two, one thousand percent yes. Point three, I'm not like a hundred percent sure. I'm not sure only about 15 to 20 controller players in each season's grand final. And going into the global championships in Copenhagen, only nine of the 100 That's players who crazy. qualified for grand finals wow. were on a controller. Of course, Mero won this tournament too. He doesn't even count. <laughs> in under three count, years, bro. we went from 70 Mero plus controller players count. in every major tournament finals to under 10. You might be wondering that if it's possible to ever see controller as the superior input, and the answer is no. no. Even if aim assist was buffed back to the strength it was in early chapter two, the game has just advanced to a point mechanically where good players would be able to counter it. If you think about how good the average player was in 2020 compared to now it is yeah. a massive difference do i want them to buff aim assist no but do i think it would be interesting <laughs> to see if it could help controller players compete i do at a level maybe if you enjoy videos like this please subscribe because i want to complete my childhood dream of getting a youtube plaque and if Let's you want to watch another video w. like this check out the evolution of mechanics i will say i'll say two things firstly i think a long range aim assist does need to get buffed just for if we're going to keep like scope weapons in the game but this if we remove these crappy ass like dmr surge metas then it won't be as bad for controller chapter 5 season 1 was a good season for controller and it was a great season everyone really enjoyed it just got to focus on fighting metas but i will say though it's worth pointing out a controller player has never won an eu fncs still to this day though so na i feel like na almost is just like separate in that regard like na's had so many dominant controller players obviously mero has kind of carried that one a lot but even solo fncs is two or one on na by controller furious and coop eu was still mouse and keyboard so eu has also just been dominated by mouse and keyboard so it kind of skews the stats a lot too play star wars hunters now and support me by downloading the game using my link in the description down below